honestly, it was, it was the best thing, um, best thing for my relationship with the Lord. Welcome to Sports Spectrum, keeping Jesus in the sports conversation. Here's your host for today's show, former ESPN producer, Jason Romano. Josh Manson, welcome back to Sports Spectrum, buddy. How you doing? I'm great. I'm great. How you doing? I'm good, man. It's uh, it's nice to do this in person. You said this is the first podcast you've really ever done in person. Yes. Everything else was uh, through Zoom. Like I said, I think COVID. Uh, I think COVID. Yeah, <laughs> COVID was the big factor. That's all right. Well, I'm glad that we're doing this in person. It's great to see you here uh, as we're taping this in Colorado. Um, let's just start with how you're feeling right now as Stanley Cup champ. It has to be a pretty cool feeling. Yeah, it's it's special. I mean, it was. Uh, it was the goal that I, I worked towards my whole life. Um, you know, when you started as a hockey player, the dream is to play in the NHL, and then it's to uh, to be successful in the NHL and have a, win a Stanley Cup. So, uh, to be able to achieve that this year it was it was an amazing feeling. All right, I like that you said that because I want us to go kind of go back and chronologically go through what the past year has been like. And I have a couple moments, obviously, that were pretty pivotal in that. Um, so go back to last September. Okay. And you're arriving at training camp, right? Getting ready to, to start last season. And you know it's a contract year, in essence. So mm -hmm. what's the mindset that you're, you're in going into last year, into this year that you now finished and saw what happened, which is pretty great. But a year ago, where were you, you know, thinking from a mindset perspective on the ice and certainly you know, even from a spiritual perspective? Well, on the ice, I guess, if I start there... Um I was coming into the season knowing that I was a free agent coming in, into the summer and I hadn't signed a contract yet. So y there was a lot of an, you know unknowns in, mm -hmm. in that regard. Um, I knew that if the team was going to make the playoffs, that it was probably going to mean me, my staying in Anaheim for the playoff push. Mm -hmm. um, so success with the team would have meant you know a little bit more stability um, throughout the season the, se the year um, for us. And I, had, I came into the season with full confidence in the team. You know, I, I obviously, like everybody, you come into the season expecting to win a Stanley Cup, and that was that was my goal uh, with Anaheim. And as the season progressed, things changed within the organization, and, you know, we came out to a good start, and it was great. And things started, kind of started to slow a little bit, and um, I got injured kind of, I don't know, a month before the trade deadline, a month and a half before the trade deadline. And, yeah. and the team kind of went on a little bit of a skid, and you could start to see – where things were heading mm. you know and the new gm came in and we had a conversation and it sounded like i was going to get traded and there was the unknown kind of hit me in the face and that was kind of you know god is always god is always there with you but that was when you start to lean in a little bit heavier and you and you kind of have to put your your trust in him a lot for what's what's the plan what does the future hold well i don't know but you know mm. uh, so i'm just going to trust you with it and that was a big part that was something you know, those couple of weeks before the trade deadline, um, really leaning on him and just kind of sitting back and when the anxiety hit to the stress hits, letting it all kind of go and just kind of trusting in him. Is it hard trying to concentrate and play and get ready for a game knowing what, that this is kind of looming? Not just the free agency part, but the fact that you might be traded. Or did you even know that, that would, did they give you any hint that you might be traded? Like, how are you kind of dealing with all that yeah he, he gave me a hint when uh, the new gm came in he gave me a hint um that that was probably the direction that we were going to have to go um and he and, uh, if you saw what happened in Anaheim, they kind of cleaned house with a lot of the guys that were free agents um yes. which was probably the best thing for the team to do for the long run so you can't really blame them um and where i ended up ended up being you know a, a huge blessing and, and part of god's plan little that i know it at that time um yeah so yeah, I to finish finish the year. We we got traded in March. Uh, I was in New York when I got the call and talked to the to the new GM. Um, March fourteenth. March fourteenth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about about being traded, and it was within the hour. I had to pack up the whole hotel room, and mm. this was like the only time we had like five days in New York because we were playing all the teams around there. So we stayed in the same hotel in New York, and I never unpacked my suitcase a lot. And this time I had it in drawers. I had all my stuff hung nice. <laughs> I had my toiletries out. Yeah. And of course, you know, and I should have known. I should have known better. But yeah, so I got the call. We want to, they want to bring you to 
LA. They play LA, you know, Colorado's playing LA the next day. So I had an hour, packed up all all the room, got all the things together. I'm getting phone calls and texts and mm. uh it was fairly stressful. And then I was on a flight an hour and a half later, two hours later, whatever it was, and mm. off to LA, landed at two thirty, got to the hotel around three, three thirty, tried to sleep. There was just no <laughs> no <laughs> it was a tough sleep to say the least. Yeah, and, that wasn't happening. No, and then went into the game and whatever, you know, played the next day in LA. Um mm. big big blessing for us was that it was in LA and the next day the guys uh were doing like a rookie thing you know just to kind of hang out um as a team team bonding kind of event and uh, I had the chance to go back to Newport see Julie see Gemma Mm -hmm. pack my bags uh so that was huge blessing I mean that was kind of settled things leveled things out for us and then ended up flying um to San Jose with the team afterwards but Mm. uh yeah so that was that was the craziest 48 hours I think of my life it was stressful and hectic and there was a lot of people reaching out uh, excited you know supporting me and and that was great I really appreciated that and um and then as we transitioned you know throughout the regular season I I kind of saw the opportunity that lied ahead and and how great of a chance we had to succeed and you probably recognized pretty quickly that this was a pretty good team that had a shot at doing something special oh yeah yeah and they were hungry to win I mean when I came in Obviously, the last couple of seasons in, in Anaheim hadn't been amazing for us, missing the playoffs, you know, and, and losing was was getting getting tough. It's it's hard to find that winning feeling again. And, and when he came into Colorado, then the locker room was like, "We want to win," you know. That was <laughs> that was it. We want to win, and and so it was infectious. And and uh, you know, the results that followed were obviously an indicator of how hungry they were. It worked out pretty well um, spiritually when you get traded. And they always say, you know, God's plan is perfect and, you know, thy will be done and we just trust him. That's easy to say that. Sometimes it's harder to actually live that. Mm -hmm. As that whole situation was unfolding, what was going through your your psyche, if you will, and your relationship with the Lord? After the the trade, you mean? Yeah. Uh, It was, I mean, there were some questions as to why, you know, I I think I'd be lying if I said, um, why did it have to go like this? I think our plan was to stay in Anaheim. You know, we, we, we enjoyed where we were. We have a house there and we made a lot of friends, put a lot of time um, and energy and, and a blood, sweat and tears, if you will, into that organization. So uh, we, were, we were wanting to stay. And, and so there was a little bit of that why. Why, why are we moving on, God? Why is yeah. this what's happened? And, um, and then it kind of turned into, okay, well, look at the opportunity that he's presented in front of us, you know, and... and I don't know what things are happening in our lives, you know, with my career or whatever it may be, um, that he could be working for the better. And, and that was kind of just, okay, sit back, let it happen, trust in what's going to happen and just taking every day step by step. And, and like you said, that's not an easy thing to do. And, and there were challenges with that. And I think there was a lot of prayer and a lot of just kind of self-reflection and talking to God and, mm. and, um, you know, just, trying to be trying to listen and have faith in in what his plan was going to be spiritually acclimating yourself to a team can be difficult because you're the new guy Mm -hmm. you're not trying to ruffle any feathers or mess up what they have going on you're just trying to fit in and you also want to grow in your faith during this time and continue being discipled and continue growing what was that part like for you was it hard or was it fairly you know smooth in whether it's team chapel or you know bible studies or anything like that what was that time like for you i think it was fairly smooth i think just because i'm an older i was an i'm an older guy um relative to hockey years sure uh so i was comfortable in my own skin enough to you know be the person that that i i know you know i didn't need to fake anything really and as i went you know more people presented themselves you know the more i i tried to live uh, as an example um, the more people came up and, and, and said, oh, you know, like, uh, I, I'm a believer as well. And, and then you get those relationships, you know. Yeah. And it didn't even take me really reaching out like crazy. It was just kind of as you as you live. Um, I think one example I, I, I had said was I, I try not to swear around the room or do anything like that. Um, really watch what I say. And one of the young guys was like, well, you don't swear, hey? And I was like, <laughs> and I was like yeah, I, I try not to. And he's like, well, is it a religious thing? And I said, yeah, it is. Uh, that's, you know, that's what it is. And he's like, oh, okay, I thought so. I thought so, you know. And so that was, he was noticing it as a young he person. Yeah, he it. recognized it. Yeah, and yeah. I thought, how cool is that, that, you know, 
people are picking up on it and it's nice to hear it every once in a while and once in a while you know the affirmation so so that was cool and there was a chaplain uh, marlon he was awesome he reached out right away and um he was sending out the text messages and it was it was tougher towards the end of the season to get the chapels together um, but i met a couple of the guys and we were getting connected with Marlon, and Marlon was reaching out and you know pouring into us. So that that was great. It was it was super smooth, and um, you know it was it was easier, I think, being an older guy and just being comfortable. Josh Manson is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. Stanley Cup champion, Josh Manson. Still sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? When you oh, say that, yeah. Stanley Cup champion, Josh sounds, Manson. Sounds crazy. Sounds awesome. I want to go there. I want to go to the postseason, um, and I really want to start with Game One, Second Round, St. Louis, because that's a moment every player. I think dreams about you know overtime hockey by the way if you're a sports fan to me that is the best it's yeah. just you're watching it as a fan I'm sure it's stressful you know if you're you know related to Josh Manson or any player uh, if you're Julie Manson watching the game like that it's got to be stressful uh, certainly if you're a fan of either of the teams that are playing but I don't really have a team I'm kind of a innocent bystander outside I'm just looking for you know a great moment a great game and you have that moment where you went you hit the game winner you get the goal and you're a defenseman, so defensemen don't get a lot of game winners and a lot of goals, period, a lot of opportunities like that, and you have that opportunity. And I remember texting you and just saying, congrats, like that must have been such a cool feeling. But for you, describe that moment, and maybe even take us through the play and then everything after that, and just having that opportunity to have your moment. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a moment you dream of, obviously, but for myself, it's not – what I'm known for so I usually after <laughs> a little dreaming, bit of an enforcer <laughs> yeah after after dreaming about that I usually kind of humble myself and say well listen let's just try to have a good game defensively yeah. keep the pucks out of the net and you know knock a few guys around yeah just do do <laughs> your job let's focus on that and we can be happy with that at the yes. end of the night so I you know you dream about that but I, for myself you know you don't really ever expect it to happen right. and uh so yeah the play just the guys obviously on our team were so good um and the shift that led up to that goal was I had nothing really to do with it. <laughs> it was the forwards, you know, working down low. And um, Landis Gog ended up getting me the puck up top. And um, I think I I think I think walked it in a little bit or pulled it inside and um, just kind of faked a little bit of a shot. Nothing glamorous by any means. And everybody kind of lined up in a row and the puck found its way through and the goalie didn't see it. And that's, you know. I said God was working because <laughs> that was nothing I did. I'll tell you that for sure. Um, yeah. I've taken that shot. I, I couldn't tell you how many times. And yes. it just happened to line up that it was in the Stanley Cup playoffs and at home. in overtime at home. Yes. And and it so, yeah, everything just lined up. And, and you it, get bum rushed. Like that's what happens, yeah, right? You everybody the game comes winner at and you, they just yeah. come at you. Yeah. And I was pretty <laughs> excited. And I think I was mic'd up for it too. Okay. Uh, actually, I know I was mic'd up. But they were micing me up like every game one of every series. But uh, so I'm mic'd up, and I, after the game, I'm doing an interview, uh, I think with TNT, and on the headset, they're playing the sounds of the microphone um, that I was wearing during everything, and all you hear is like, ah. <laughs> Just <laughs> screaming. <laughs> screaming, yeah, and, and you don't even know what you're saying, and I'm like, oh, man, this is embarrassing. Oh, man. Yeah, but it, but it was it was amazing, and all the guys coming at you, and everybody's so happy for you, and mm -hmm. that moment, I'll never forget that moment, um, you know, winning the Stanley Cup tops it, obviously. Of course. Um, but that's but, right there, right? But it's close, yeah. I'm, it's the most important goal I've ever scored in my career. And uh, the feeling and just being able to celebrate that with your teammates. And then all the support I got after, obviously, like you said, you reaching out and just everybody reaching out was so, so special. Yeah. I want to go through – we're going to get to the Stanley Cup finals in a second. But the the playoff journey – and you guys were going every other day. This was a condensed playoff, it felt like. I think it started May 1st, and you last played June 26th. So yeah. you're cramming four rounds into less than two months here. So it's a lot. It's every other day. How are you finding time to stay connected to God in the midst of this? Yeah. Or was that difficult? Because I, I could see – and I don't think anybody would say anything less about you as a Christian if you said it was nearly impossible because you're going every other day. What was this journey like spiritually for you, your your relationship with the Lord in the midst of having such a run like this? Honestly, it was it was the best thing, um, best thing for my relationship with the Lord. It was, hmm. I, I was... How so? I think it's because I, I became so, I trusted what God was doing. Um, and I know, um, I don't want it to sound like, uh, like it was an easy thing or that I, you know, I was working super hard at it, but I really, it almost became, 
in, in, for lack of a better word, a superstition where it was like, I'm putting everything on you, you know, yeah. I'm trusting everything to you. Um, I'm going to do everything I can to be the best version of myself, the best image of God that I can be. So I, I every night I would, I, you know, I was doing a, a Bible in one year plan. So it was like, I got to read my Bible a night. I got to read my, my, my Bible a day, you know, like, so every night I, I would try and do that or throughout the day, whatever it was, I try to get that in because then I'd feel, yeah, and I don't want this to sound bad, but you know, superstitious. It was like, okay, well I got it done. You know, I'm sure I'm trying to do my part, even though I know that's not what it's about. It, it, it was good because it was motivating me, motivating me to stay in it, you know, and mm-hmm. keep my, my walk going through the playoffs. Yeah. And, uh, I was reading, I'd read, you know, it was part of my game day routine. Um, I would read after lunch. So I'd read for 30 minutes, whatever. And I read, uh, uh mere Christianity. Yeah. C. By C.S. Lewis. Lewis. Yes. Great book. Yeah. Yeah. So I read that. Um, and that was great. Great you know, just to keep me involved and, and then praying, praying a lot through the playoffs and just, uh, thy will be done, God, <laughs> you know, like it was, it's hard. It's not, a hard prayer, right? Oh, Cause you want to say, gosh. God, help us win. And yeah. Like, and you realize he doesn't care if you win or he, lose. Right? I know. And you, and you'd have to remind yourself, God, I know this isn't what's important. You know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, storing treasures in heaven, but if you could just help us, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I pray for my teammates, keep them healthy, sure. and, you know, and, and you're, you're finding things to pray about it. And, and it was great because it really like, I, that was the most conversation I think I've had with God in, in my life mm. for that span of two months. So it, it was amazing. Wow. That's really cool to hear. Um, let's go to the finals because you sweep Edmonton. I'm not saying that that series is easy, but you sweep them and you go through Edmonton and you get to the Stanley cup finals and game one at home. I'm just curious if you can describe what it was like being on the ice for the first time in that atmosphere. I mean, even before the game, I remember looking, because the the NBA Finals was going on at the same time. I'm a big Boston Celtics fan. I was looking for tickets to go to one of the games, and I saw the cheapest ticket just to get in the door is like $1,000. And then I'm talking to some of the guys at Sports Spectrum who live in Colorado and a few of the other people, and I go look online, and I'm like, it's almost double that just to get in the door for game one of the Stanley Cup Finals in Denver. Describe what that was like. You remember even just going on the ice for the first time and getting ready to to do battle? Oh, yeah. Uh, it was it was insanity. I mean, the rink, ball arena, and the Denver fans, they were crazy. They were so loud. And, <laughs> and that atmosphere, that's what the playoffs are all about, in yes. my opinion. Yeah. The fans um, supporting you, cheering you on. When we stepped on the ice and they had the lights going and the towel or the the, the pom poms they had, mm. um, you just get this whole rush of emotions and, and adrenaline. And, and I think the hardest part was was staying level, yeah. you know, because you, you get you get all these. I don't know how if you ever get super emotional afterwards, you feel so drained, right? And you come on the ice and like you're just you're hyped up and before you even start the before game. Before you even started the game, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, exactly. Yeah. And throughout the whole day, even you know you're you're on edge. You're like, well, you know what's coming, and then you step on the ice and it's going crazy, and your adrenaline's high, and and then you get to the bench to start the game, and you're like, oh, you're like, oh, I'm a little tired, you know. <laughs> and like, I, oh yeah, by the way, you got to go play now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think that was a bit of a learning experience for our whole group was just. Yeah leveling your emotions and, and trying to stay calm all the way up to save everything for the for the actual play not the not the, the everything beforehand and it helped that you won i mean winning that game and, and finishing out okay we got 1-0 we got this thing going on and then you go to game two and that's when people start saying oh this this might be over quickly because <laughs> it's seven nothing and you guys run away with game two but you get a goal in that game yeah and again goals are not something that you just oh yeah every day we're gonna get a goal no problem this is not something that you're preparing in essence to your job as you said is to just do some other things it's to protect you know the goals from going in and you know push a couple of people get a couple guys around a little bit yeah rough them up but you get that goal yeah. what was that like for you oh i mean like i said our team was just so so good and i feel like in i felt yeah and 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 i'm just a byproduct i firmly believe a byproduct of of our team and when the team was playing well it just helped me to have more success and and so that's that's kind of what just happened and and scoring that goal in the finals well i mean talk about another dream you know contributing to your team's success in the finals in the playoffs so um i just felt like (laughs) nothing i was doing and I, i i really mean this nothing i was doing was through my own power mm. it was all him it was it, the increase as you're wearing the shirt the yeah increase in christ yes it was not me and, and i can i can firmly believe that because i've been on two-on-ones like that goal 
and I've missed the net. I've tried to pass. I, you know, th- there's so many things, and and this just goes in, and I'm like, thank you, Lord. Wow. Yeah. And then you get bum rushed again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because that's what happens when you score a goal in hockey. They yes. come right at you. Yeah. It's a pretty cool feeling to watch as a fan, for sure. I can't imagine being someone on the ice doing that. But as an athlete, I know this from many that we talk to, whatever sport it is. Doubt can creep in, anxiety can creep in, fear can creep in, even just the pressure of playing in in such a you know a big time moment, the one you dream about your whole life. Uh, how are you handling that during the six games against Tampa? Because it's a lo- it's it's not seven games, but it's a long series. Mm-hmm. So how are you handling all of those emotions? And, and you know the Bible talks about God giving us that peace that we really can't describe. It surpasses all understanding. How are you able to handle all of those other emotions in the midst of trying to prepare yourself for each game? Well, I think we we knew that we were up against, you know, a team that had won twice. Right? They knew how to win. They were they're back to back champs. Yeah. yeah, they'd been down two nothing in series, and they came back and won, and that's how it took them to the finals. And and so we knew that it was going to be it was going to be tough. But when you go up to nothing again, you know, like it's hard not to have that that doubt when you see what they've done. Hmm. And so there was a lot of uh, so doubt creeps in when doubt, you def- go up two zero. Yeah, definitely interesting because like, you don't want to blow it, right? Like now you're up to nothing, <laughs> and you're like, well, if they win the next game, right? They win game three, and you're like, man, if they win game four, now it's like all that work we did in game one and two, it's kind of gone. We're back to level, and and you kind of get that doubt, and you feel that pressure a bit. You're like, oh, well, we don't want them to get the momentum because. We know what they can do with it. We know they know how to win. Like this isn't going to be easy, and mm. and uh, you just it was once again one of those times where any time I had doubt, I just prayed, and it was like just help me have a level mind. Help me have a like help me to stay in the moment. Yeah. So a lot of times, like, even on the bench, you think like, oh, we're up three one, or oh, we're down two nothing, or whatever it may be, right? And and you start thinking, and maybe the, the thoughts would go bad, and you just I would just try to reroute my brain to God. Hmm. and pray about it and hey help me focus on the task at hand help me focus on the, this shift or whatever it may be and it sounds so simple but it really did help me would you have conversations with your teammates in the midst of things like that where they would see that you might be a little more calmer for lack of a better word or that prayer yeah. time i mean were there moments where you're you're able to talk to it i mean because your teammates you're obviously getting in the moment hey what do you see there what do i got to do better what do I got to watch out for? But are there moments where you're able to pause for a second and maybe have a conversation like that with a teammate? I, I talked to my D partner um, for the last two series, Jack Johnson. You know, he's he's a believer as well. And mm. and so I was able to have conversations with him a little bit, of just, you know, about prayer on the bench and whatever it may be. Um, yeah. But everybody handles things in, in different ways. And um, so I didn't, uh, I just kind of stuck to my own in that a little bit, um, did my thing. I felt like that was working for me and yeah. whatever works for everybody else. If somebody else had a problem and they were feeling pressure, then I would, I would be more than glad to help them out in my, the way that I was dealing with it. But I think everybody was, was handling in their own ways. Um, well, June 26, 2022 at the time of this taping and at the time of the podcast releasing, it's still not even a month since that day, June 26th, uh, it's game six. You pull it out. Your champ, you go on the road, it makes it a little harder. Of course, you would like to clinch in game five at home. Uh, we were talking beforehand at breakfast uh, with your wife about all that goes on, the scrambling just to buy tickets and flights and hotels just to get you from Denver and your family to Tampa. Uh, but you go and do it. And obviously, you had your family there to see that moment. Describe the initial thoughts that are going through your brain when that final horn goes off. Because you had an assist in the game and, and, and you contributed to that last goal and you guys win it. But the moment the horn goes off, three, two, one, and you know you're a champ, but the season's over. Like this whole oh, culmination yeah. of everything that we've just talked about is done. Yeah, it was just, I want to say relief because you know, it's like we, we did it. We, we achieved the task that we set out to do. Yeah. Uh, and I'd never finished a season where the last game you win – and that's the end of it, you know, and you don't really know if it's going to be your last game. Usually it's, you know, the end of the season or whatever. And, and to go on on a high note like that. Um, so it, it was sweet relief. Just like, thank goodness, this is all over. Mm-hmm. We accomplished the task that we wanted to. And obviously the, you're, <laughs> you can't even put into words how you feel. You're just, was it, fe- did it feel like an out of body experience? It, almost? It, it really does. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, everybody's so excited and everybody's screaming and yelling and so happy. And, and to see everybody around you like that, um, 
and you look up and in, in the stands, you know, immediately I tried to look for my, my family and see my wife and daughter and my parents and my in-laws and my sister and the people that were there supporting me and how happy they were. It, mm. it was, it was really emotional. I mean, you just, you can't describe a, a feeling like that. How heavy is the Stanley Cup? It looks heavy from outside. You guys are just like lifting it over your shoulders. And I'm thinking this thing is huge the way you're holding it. You don't want to drop it. How heavy is that thing? I'll be honest with you. It's it's heavier than you think. <laughs> I think I Googled it and it's 35 pounds. 35 pounds. But it does not feel like 35 pounds. Even oh. when, I mean, when you're really excited and you get over your head, it doesn't, doesn't feel like much. But when you're just kind of holding it, it, it starts to get heavy, which I think is a good thing. I've said this before. I, I think it's good because guys don't want to hog it. You know, you're holding it and you're like, oh, man, I'm getting tired. Okay, okay, somebody else take it. Yeah, you got to take it. I can't hold it any longer, you know, and I think that's what makes it so, so great. I mean, this trophy is just so iconic. And yes. my whole life, I wouldn't even look at it. Like if it came around, I, I, I've been around it maybe once or twice in my life and I, I hardly wanted to look at it. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't want to get close to it. I didn't want to touch it. Uh, and then when you win and you can just... The, I said the best thing was we were all hanging out as a team. Things we do all the time. You look over and it's just sitting there. And you can walk up. You can touch it. You can pick it up. You can look at it. And I thought that was just the, the best thing. Wow. I don't know this. I should know this. Did your dad ever win a cup? No, he didn't. Yeah. So what was that moment like talking to dad? And he, he, he gets to see you. I mean, because he played for so many years. I'm sure that was a dream of his as well. Yeah. And he gets to see his son have have that moment. Yeah. He, he played for 17 years. Um, made the made the Stanley or made the playoffs a lot yeah. um i i don't know how many times he made the final but i know he made it once because i was old enough i was at game six okay in dallas when they lost to, to new jersey mm. and i remember just kind of the sorrow <laughs> i guess if you're going to use that word if i could use that word but sure it was devastating you know he worked his whole life he played for 17 years um to win win the stanley cup and and it really showed me from a young age how hard it is it doesn't just it didn't just come by, you know what I mean? You guys can play for a long time and not win. Yeah. And it, it made me realize how special it is to win. And then to look up in the stands and, and see everybody, but see my dad fist pumping and just so happy. And, and that hug I shared with him after when we were on the ice was just so special. I, I can't I can't put into words and I can't wait to, to have the cup again for my, you know, whenever my day may be and and um, and celebrate with everybody again. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that in a second. We're not going to give away the day, even if we think we know it, because we don't want to. We don't want to spoil anything. But I want to ask you about the parade, because we were watching some of the the highlights on social media, and it looked like a sea of people. Which I guess anytime there's a parade after a team wins a title, usually that city comes and rallies around. But it looked a little bit different in Denver, going through that parade. What was that experience like for you? And your family was there too, I know. At least your wife was there. What was that experience like for you to, to go through that parade with your teammates and just see the sea of people in the city of Denver? I, I couldn't believe how many people were there. I really couldn't. And, and they're all cheering the whole time. Every, every, we were on fire trucks. Yeah. Every truck that went by, and we didn't even have the cup. I said, for those guys that have the Stanley Cup on their, on their fire truck, like, right. I couldn't imagine how crazy the whole drive must have been for them, you know? And because even for us, it was it was just crazy. You lift your hands in the air, and the whole place would go go nuts. And you yeah. just you feel so great. And and uh, just to share it with with my wife and and with my daughter. I wish my daughter was just a little bit older yeah. so she could fully realize, you know, how special this all was. But we'll have pictures, and she'll be able to look back on it. But oh, yeah. um, but it was it was crazy. There were so many people. When we got up on the stage at the, at the end of the parade, you know, we went up on the stage or whatever with the cup, and everybody kind of gave their speeches. You looked out at, I don't even know where we were, but when you looked out at the, the, the big area and the amount of people and how deep it went, mm. I, I couldn't even believe it. I, I, there's like once again, there's no words to describe that thing. When you win, you just there's, you can't even describe all the great things that are happening. You said it reminded you of that that scene in Forrest Gump, yeah, right? Yeah, when, <laughs> in for yeah, in Forrest Gump when uh, uh, I don't even know. I think that, he was in D.C. If yeah, I, I think so. And, and he's standing on the stage and yeah. and it's just a sea of people. Yes. And I think they're protesting against the war, maybe something like that. Yeah, yeah. and it's like that's it, what it felt like. Uh, you yeah, said. that's what it reminded me of. It's it so yeah. funny. Oh. Well, every, every player dreams of that moment. So um, very cool that you got to experience that. And now something bigger than a Stanley Cup, by the way, uh, or even a different team or a new contract is a new baby. Yeah. Coming yeah. in September, um, Gemma's going to have a sister. Uh, are you ready to be a girl dad times two? Yeah. 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 I, I love uh, 
I, I, having our, our daughter the first time, I couldn't believe the, the love that you have for, for your little girl. Um, so to have another one coming, I couldn't be more excited. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be really special. It's going to be once again, probably a little bit hectic because <laughs> we, you but know, you know, hectic, look what just happened since March, right? Yeah, it's it's yeah. been hectic, crazy for the yeah. last four months. Yeah. I got to give a lot of kudos to my wife, um, yes. for, for putting up with everything, you know, with the trade and, and handling our, our young daughter and, and being pregnant through it all right. on top Jeez. of it and going through all the celebrations and the late nights. And, uh, I got to give a big shout out to her. That's the side. I don't think we as fans even see is all the sacrifices and things oh, yeah. like I described, you know, the after game five and you lose, you know, just getting on the phone with your family and organizing tickets and last minute hotels. That's the stuff people don't see what really goes on behind the scenes to make any of this work as a professional athlete. Yeah, there, there's a lot and you, you need a great support system to, uh, to get through it because it's a long season. There's a lot of ups and downs and there's injuries and there's, you know, lost games and, and so many things that that you don't even know might happen yeah. um and you need a support system you need people there backing you up and i think that's what that's what helps carry you through really so we don't know everything about the day that you're going to have with the cup but what do you think that'll be like just being able to hang out with the the greatest trophy in sports for a full day oh man <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I say hang out like it's a person, right? Yeah, it, it, it seriously is. It's it, The Stanley Cup is like a celebrity. Yes. Everywhere you go, it, it just draws they the They brought the Stanley Cup to ESPN maybe 10 years ago, and we had people, including myself and employees, lined up to take pictures with it. Oh, yeah. Like it was meeting a celebrity. Yeah, it, it, that's what we all said, too. You, you, anytime it, it went anywhere, it was a crowd, and it was people wanting to, to see it. Just to see it, just to take a picture of it, you know, let alone to get in line to see, to have a picture with it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a crazy. Do you think you'll drink like milk out of it or something? Or I, I haven't put much an thought adult into it. An beverage of yeah. some sort? You I know? haven't put much thought into it. I think, I think what I'm most excited for is just to share it with my family, you yes. know, with, with Julie and with yeah. my in-laws and with, with my family back in Saskatchewan, you know, my parents and have the, have it with my dad and, yeah. and my grandparents, you know, and, and especially, you know, one person in particular, my grandma, who mm. watched my dad, my mom, my dad's mom, sorry, yeah, who watched my dad play his whole life, mm -hmm. you know, and now we get to share that moment with her, and I think that's going to be just extremely special. I can't wait to have it with all, with all of them. Make sure you put Gemma in, in it multiple times and get pictures inside that. Cup. Yeah, I don't know if she's going to fit. Can she fit? I, I, was, don't, I don't know, know what the, the circumference of the, oh, <laughs> of the cup she's, is. But. She's growing like crazy. Her legs are so long. I don't That's know. so funny. Yeah. Well, that'll be a really cool moment for you. All right, we're less, um, like I said, less than a month since you won it all. So there's still a lot of processing that maybe you had to do or will do someday. But when you look back at this past year, this past season, uh, this will be my last question. What are you most thankful for uh, from the Lord about this entire run, this entire season, this entire year? Oof. I would say his faithfulness. You know, through all the ups and downs and through through all the things that happen in a season and things that happen, you know, among your family and, um, you know, with with your team and the it's because at the end of the day, it's a business, right? And you, you really don't know what's going to happen, but him being there through it all and constantly reminding me of what was important, where my hope lies, um, that I, I, I just, I like, I feel like I've said this so many times, I can't put it into words. You can't, you can't describe that. And it, I was so thankful for that because I really felt like I had a little bit of an edge, you know, over people who maybe don't have that. Yeah. I, I was able to lean so heavy on that and using my support system with my wife and helping you know her to remind me of that as well and and uh but yeah just his faithfulness through it all that come what may he was with us uh knowing that we could trust in him and and just that he has a plan for us yeah Turned out to be a pretty good plan this past year, I'd yeah, say. Yeah. Uh, but there's got lots of great more plans for you, hopefully, and it'll be fun to watch where the journey uh, ends up for you, Josh Manson. Thanks for doing this, buddy. Thanks for coming on and uh, recapping what was a pretty special uh, last few months. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much for watching today on Sports Spectrum. Make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos. And if you want more stories on sports and faith, check out our website, sportsspectrum.com.